Hello everyone. The key verse today comes from Philippians 3.19. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and the glory in their shame with, with mindsets on earthly things. Topic, getting filled by God. Affirmations. I'm going to say them and I'll pause for you to say it behind me if you like. I'm getting filled by God. I need thee. I have faith in God. God is my safe place. We all seek Jesus for a reason. Some of us love, some of us comfort and protection, others just for the blessings. But whatever we seek him for, especially if not the right reasons, we need to change how we view him. A lot of us see him as an ATM and that's not what he's, he is to me. When I met him, I was broken into so many pieces. I was alone. I was scared. I, I was a lot of things. And when I gave him, myself to him, I needed salvation. But most of all, I wanted and needed to be loved. And he gave that to me. And when I fell in love with him, I realized he could be more if I loved him too, if I allowed him to. The people in the story followed him to the other side, not because of miracles, but because of food. They chased him down because he filled their bellies, not realizing that this same man could fill them spiritually. We are so busy asking and telling him what he didn't do that we forget he can be everything and more for us and that he might haven't done what we wanted, but he still blessed us and kept us. Philippians 3.19 says, their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame, their mind set on earthly things. We are so focused on things of this earth, having more money, having more things and having bigger and better careers. We are so driven by things that those things will be our destruction. Don't get me wrong. God wants us to enjoy the fruit of our labor, but he doesn't want us to be so focused on that, that we forget that those things will fade. They won't last. We can't build on life with sand and expect a storm when a storm comes that it won't dissolve because it will, because it's no real foundation there. But in God, it is always a foundation and a sturdy one. Luke 6 and 48 says, they are like men building a house who dug down deep and laid their foundation on a rock. And when a flood came, the torrent struck that, that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. We have to be like the man in the story. He dug into, he dug into a rock. But the difference is we don't have to dig to find the rock. We don't have to dig to be set free. Still, we must dig deep to stay planted, to remain in God. Many people don't want to read their word. You find stories where God had to enlarge the territory of people that are faithful. He gave them, he gave to them that sought him and that and, and that wanted more of him. When we seek God for the right reasons, he will bless our life. But we must be aligned with God and his will. Ezekiel 33 and 31 says, and they come to you as people come and they set before you as my people and they hear what you say, but they, they will not do it for their lustful talk in their mouths. They act. Their heart is set on their game. <sighs> people are the same. It doesn't matter what generation is, how old they are. No, wicked people only have one thought process. How can I gain? That's what God was telling Ezekiel. They sit and they hear, but they don't hear. They sit and they see, but they don't see because all they are focused on is their gain. What can they gain from it all? We must take our mind off what we can gain and what would help us to obtain a deeper spiritual life. What realms of the spirit can he get us into? Or what divine knowledge could the Holy Spirit give to give to us if we only seek and study? I sometimes spend, spend hours in the word of God trying to understand why was this verse placed there? Or how can it benefit my life? How could I draw closer to him? We have to start seeking after him, not how he can further us in our life. All those things will be added unto us. It tells us in Matthew 6, 33, but seek first the kingdom of his righteousness and all these things will be given to us as well. All these things will be added. Even time, even time. when we take the time to seek God, we don't have to worry that we won't have time for other things because we have seen him take the time and reverse it. We will make it, he will make it where we have time for what we need. Jesus cares about what we do what we need time for. But the precious time we set aside to pray and read our word, he adores that. He adores that we are seeking him with our whole heart. Verse 26, 27 says, do not work for food that spoils for the, but, but for, for food that endures to eternal life, which the son of man will give you for on him. God, the father has placed his seal of approval. When we seek him, 
When we seek something that will push us further towards the kingdom of God, when we seek God, we are seeking substance. These people crossed the water to obtain more food, which was full. He was seeking, he was telling them, seek me. I will satisfy you. I will quench your thirst. Don't, don't you know I will do that? Don't you know what it is? But when we give our lives to God, he can fill that hole. The Holy Spirit had me to add this part in early this morning. Some of us are so thirsty. Our spirit man is so thirsty because we are so busy pouring into others that we aren't sitting still long enough for someone to pour into us. Some of us are too busy searching on how to continue to pour when we're running out. So God says, when you can connect with me, I will pour into you. He said, I will feel you for the next person and the next person. Some of you are destined to feel others. It's what we were born to do. But when we do this, we must settle down and allow him to restore us. God says today, come into me all that are heavy laden. I will give you rest. He said, it's time to rest. Jesus can be whatever we need. But we must lean on him. We have to stop leaning on the world and seeking and seek Jesus to fill our hearts with the things from the things of this world. We, we can have the things of this world if we won't. We can't have the things of this world. But we must focus on God so he can turn our reasons for life into something glorious. We can't have Christ and have the world. It's empathy. It will go against each other. I promise you it will. Prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for ke keeping us. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for always being what we need and more. Father, fill us with what we need. Father, we need you more than, than things, more than items, more than having more people in our life. Lord, we ask you to touch every facet of our lives. We ask you to continue to love us. Lord, we ask you to continue to show us the way. Lord, we praise you. We are so grateful for your word. We're so grateful for your presence. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Reference, Revelation 21 and 6 says, and he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give them the spring of the water of life without payment. Revelation 21 and 6. Isaiah 44 and 3 says, For I will pour water on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon their offspring and my blessings on your descendants. Isaiah 44 and 3. John 7 and 37. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood and cried out, I, If anyone thirsty, let him come to me and drink. John 7 and 37. Further reading. Acts 6, Leviticus 10, and Judges 2. So today, if you feel like you're not getting filled enough by God or filled enough in, in, in your life, you must seek him more. Jesus can fill any empty hole. I had such an empty hole in my heart that I didn't realize I had it. I didn't realize that I was an alcoholic until I gave my life to Christ. I looked back. I needed a drink to get up. I needed a drink to go to sleep. I needed a drink to calm down. And when he stepped into my life, he changed my life completely. Because I was drinking to fill a hole that I kept waiting for people to fill it. And I didn't need that. I needed him. I looked at for things that, that tore up, that got stolen from me to fill me. And it, it, didn't, it didn't fill me. I looked for people to fill me and they didn't fill me. They left. And the only person that ever stayed with me was him. He stayed with me. He changed me. He molded me. But we have to allow him to fill us. To a certain degree, we all are running towards the end. And we're buying and gathering all these things for what? None of this stuff can fill us. It makes us happy. It's a temporary happy or temporary joy. But nothing feels like Jesus can. Nothing can fill us and give us what we need. So today, if that's what you're looking for and that's what you need, ask him to fill you. Ask him to replace the emptiness that's inside you. And remember that Jesus loves you no matter what you do. Thank you. Have a blessed day.